It's deja vu guys, just like the first round of Europa League match action, both the old firm sides have lost again, Rangers falling 1-0 in Czech Republic to Sparta Prague and Celtic getting thrashed 4-0 at home by Bayer Leverkusen, but funnily enough it's the 4-0 scoreline, it's the team that lost Got smashed 4-0, I think, that were actually the better of the two old firm clubs tonight. I thought Celtic were very hard done by to lose 4-0 to Bayer Leverkusen. I'm not saying they deserved a draw at the game, but they certainly didn't deserve to lose by four goals to nil. I just think in the end, the quality of Bayer Leverkusen told in that game. But in terms of chances, I mean, Celtic were right up there. As for Rangers... Um, it was, it was 90 minutes of mediocrity. I had no faith Rangers would win this game. I actually thought Sparta Prague would win, but in my match prediction in my preview, I put 1-1 one, one Rangers, or 1-1 one, one the draw. But deep down, I actually had money. I had a bet. It's a £50 double on Sparta Prague and Bayer Leverkusen. I thought Sparta Prague would win by two goals to one in reality, but I gave Rangers the benefit of the doubt. And uh, I shouldn't do that because Rangers at the moment are a pretty bad team. So, yeah, I'm pretty happy. £375 up. I'm not in uh, rant mode tonight. I'm not in a bad mood. But we'll talk about Rangers first of all here. We'll, we'll get this shit out of the way. All right. Opened up. No bad. 15 minutes in, Rangers, you know, they did create chances. Nothing clear cut, but they were they were looking they were looking promising. They were looking, you know, the better team. And I think you felt at that stage, you know what, this, this is the wins for the take and Rangers can do this. But after about the first 15, 20 minutes... I don't know what happened, but the, the, the game pretty much died. Uh, Rangers created approximately the square root of Hee Haw, and it was, it was a boring game. Uh, the longer the game went on, the more Sparta Pride came into it. They ended up scoring. Uh, corner came in. It was headed on towards goal. Hits the post. Comes back, back across the goal line. Just crosses the line. McGregor dives. Manages to punch it out. But by this time, the ball's already crossed the line. And it was 1-0 Sparta Pride. McGregor... Also made a few good saves in the first half. Um, I think McGregor was Rangers' best player tonight, if we're being completely honest. No one else really did anything. Uh, they were fucking pretty shite. Fashion Sakala did score twice in the second half. Oh, he scored once in the second half, and then he had another opportunity where he should have scored. But both times, he was offside. And this guy just isn't capable of beating the offside trap. How can Rangers beat teams in Europe when Fashion Sakala can't he beat an offside trap? You know, it doesn't, doesn't make any sense. Um, he can't beat the rules, so how are you going to beat fucking quality opposition? Uh, but then again, like I said, Rangers didn't really do much till the last five minutes. That's when they started to put pressure on the Sparta Prague defence. And they did push them back. They won a few corners, balls into the box. But again, it was nothing. There was no real mega opportunities. Uh, and to be fair, we can say Rangers had opportunities and chances to like, equalise half chances late on. But... Let's be real, how many chances did Sparta Prague have in the second half to put the game beyond uh, doubt? They couldn't, they hit the, the crossbar for a counter-attack, I mean, the guy gets the ball, slot it through to him, sweaty goal, and he can't even score it, so, yeah, McGregor, nothing he could do there. Sparta Prague, in the end, 1-1 now, was it a fair scoreline? I'm going to say no, I think Sparta Prague probably should have won this by a couple, but Rangers also could have scored, you know, late on, so... Even though I think Sparta Prague should have been one nil, more than one nil up come the last like you know five minutes of the game, Rangers could have equalised in the, the dying moments. So I think Sparta Prague will be happy with the the win. But if they didn't, if you know what I mean, clinic not being clinical enough almost cost them uh, two points tonight because Rangers could have easily got a draw. Also, there was a lot of booing. Kamara got sent off, and there was a lot of booing every time Kamara touched the ball. Since then, we've seen a lot of pundits, we've seen a lot of articles, newspapers, news websites, you name it, we've seen it. People coming out and calling the, the Czech Republican fans. And I, and I use the fans lightly, because I don't even know if it was fans in the night. Apparently, they just let in a bunch of kids. <laughs> the the uh, Sparta Prague fans were banned for the arena tonight, so it was just kids in. And apparently, they were booing Kamara, and that means they're all racist, and that's all good in that. And I get that, but let's be honest, half this Rangers team's black, and only Kamara was getting booed. So could it just be the booing Kamara because of the whole incident last year with the Slavia Pra player, you know? It, it could be more down to the individual rather than just the skin colour. Because if, 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 they were be, if they were booing Kamara based on the fact they're racist, wouldn't they be booing the other black players? Like Aribo, you know, Goldson, Bakuna, Bassi, Sakala. You know, they didn't. But I tell you what, on performance, the whole team deserved to be booed, apart from Alan McGregor. 
I mean, there's not one Rangers player that I'd give above. Uh, match ratings I'm not going to do, but there's not one I'd give above a five. And a five's been fucking generous. Apart from McGregor, I'd give McGregor like a probably a seven or an eight, maybe a 7.5. He was good tonight. He was good tonight. Right, moving on to Celtic. First 15 minutes of the first half, they looked great. Kyogo... His movement off the ball is phenomenal. You know, the guy, the guy's a danger. I mean, he's in the team. Celtic look a lot better. They had some chances, again, just similar to Rangers, albeit probably better chances, more clear-cut chances. Hadreki was forced into a really good save. They didn't take them. And then before you know it, they got punished by Leverkusen. 2-0 up at the end of the first half. Sloppy for Celtic. Every time they're at the back, even when they're playing it for the back, it always looks like they're going to give the possession away, like with a sloppy pass. Or, I mean, the first goal, Turnbull slips. It was it was unfortunate. Montgomery tried to clear it, couldn't do so. And then, the, I mean, the second goal, was it was pretty poor defending again for Celtic. We get into half time, you know, make or break. Celtic come out again. And again, they were the better team for the first, like, 15 20 minutes of the, the second half created more chances. Kyogo had a really good chance. Uh, Rogic had a good chance. Abada had a good chance. A couple of penalty claims that were pretty much nothing. And they, they just couldn't get a goal the night. Bayer Leverkusen then went on to get another two. Ends up 4-0 in the night. Uh, with about 15, 20 minutes to go, Celtic started making substitutions, and at this stage, I mean, they lost any hope they had. They're fucking, you know, you're taking off like Cal McGregor and Kyogo. You're bringing on what a jetty and um, near bitten and fucking McCarthy and shit like that. I mean, come on, bringing those guys on just to lose the game, pretty much. Just to you know, let's get the good players off and we'll settle for the defeat. I think that's what Angie's tactics were late on. But yeah, there you go, guys. A disappointing night for Scotland in Europa League here. And after last season, the last couple of seasons, the old firm have done so well to build up the coefficient. The reward for that is, of course, whoever wins the league this season in the Scottish Cinch Premiership will automatically qualify for the group stage of the Champions League. And that's fucking great. That's all fine and dandy. But at the end of the day, the performances this season have been shite. And you can guarantee Scotland will be slipping back down that coefficient table slash ranking. So whoever wins the league this season, I tell you what, I fucking tell you what, it would be absolutely hilarious. If after Rangers and Celtic's good results in Europe get the coefficient up to where they qualify for a Champions League's place and it's not Rangers or Celtic that actually claim that Champions League place. And the way the league's going this season, would you really be surprised if one of the Edinburgh clubs won the league? Because, I mean, Celtic and Rangers look really poor. They do. I don't think Hearts or Hibs will win the league, but it's, it's probably the best chance I've had. You know, It's the best chance I think we've had for a non-old firm club to win the league in... I mean, in recent, since I've been born, the only two occasions I can think of non-old firm clubs having a chance of winning the league was Aberdeen during the, the Ronnie Dyler era because he was shit and Hearts during the 2005-2006 season when George Burley was in charge. But obviously, we all know what happened there. They sacked George Burley. George Burley replaced him with a pedo. Why you would do that, I don't fucking know. Didn't make any sense at the time. And when you look at the results after it, it, it made even lesser sense. So I. That's probably the only two chances, the only two seasons. Well, maybe two, three seasons if you count Aberdeen's two seasons under Dyla is two. But either way, either way, right, the, the opportunity for a non-old firm team to win the league doesn't come around often. But this year, it may be a possibility. So who knows? But overall, the grand scheme of things, it's it's two games played and it's, it's two defeats for both old firm clubs. Uh, Celtic find themselves, what? Six points behind both Leverkusen and Real Betis. For me, there's no way now that they can come back from that. For, for Celtic to have any realistic chance, they would need to defeat Fenacavros twice to get onto six points, which I don't think they'll do. <laughs> or they might do, but it's not going to be easy. And then they're, they're, they're probably going to need to pick up a, a minimum of four points against Betis and Leverkusen. Again, that's a tough ask. As for Rangers... Because Sparta Prague uh, drew with Brondy in the opening game. They're only four points behind. And Rangers up next have Brondy twice. So who knows? Rangers could be in a situation where after the next two games. Could be in six points. And Sparta Prague could lose to Leon twice. And Leon could, uh, Sparta Prague could be in four points. Rangers could have a two-point advantage. But man, who knows? It's all speculation. At this stage, it's not speculation. The way Rangers are playing, they don't look like winning a game again. Never mind fucking beating Brondy twice. So I don't know. And as for Celtic, I mean... <laughs> Going forward, they look good at times, they look great at times, but 
I mean, at the back, it's a bomb scare, and I mean, it's all good being, you know, <laughs> being looking promising going forward, but unless you put the ball in the back of the net, it means fucking absolutely nothing. Anyway, guys, that's your Open League review here, double match review, Rangers, Celtic, both lost, absolute shite night for Scotland, at least I won some money, but uh, aye. Gonna go, go, go and watch the tennis now later on the night. It's Andy Murray, Scotland. Can he fucking get a win for Scotland? I know we're pissed, but I'll take it. I'd rather a win in the football. But here, I'll take it in the tennis. Come on, Andy. Come on, Andy, son. And, uh, oh, and by the way, talk about wins for Scotland. Scotland versus Israel in about what, two weeks' time now. A week's time. What a game. Massive game. We must fucking win that. If we win that, we have got a real... I say a real up. If we win that, we're practically qualified for a playoff spot for the World Cup. So you can't really ask for much more. Anyway, guys, that's it. Till next time. Being Son of Scotland TV. If you want to watch some FIFA 22 career modes, check out my gaming channel, Son of Scotland 90. Been uploading regularly to that. Loads of good fids on there. Not as many good fids on here, but I will be changing that soon. Till next time, though. Peace.